Hey folks, full disclosure for this video, I am recording this video very early in the morning. Uh, I'm on about my fifth vet uh, visit this week for some cat related issues. So like, I'm good, the cat is probably good, but we're in the process of figuring some stuff out and I'm quite tired. So apologies for lower volume or lower energy level right now. Hi folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another legacy video and today we're going to be testing sort of a hypothesis from Brian that there is an alternative way to build the Moon Stompy decklist right now that stops the curve at 3 rather than going up to 4 for cards like Caves of Chaos Adventurer which have become a staple of the archetype as it is currently built. Brian sent me um, a tier 2 donation, meaning that I would tune this deck list slightly, but honestly, I think it's pretty good as it was submitted, and I've only made a couple of changes. Brian initially sent this in with four copies of Den of the Bugbear, which I think even with the curve ending at three is still a little bit much. The Magus of the Moons and Blood Moons kind of shut off the downside of this ability, but they also shut off the upside of the ability. So it feels to me like playing the full playset is a bit much, given the traditional downsides that is going to have against Wasteland in particular, which is just very, very popular in this metagame. So I went down to three of those. And there was a specific bullet in the sideboard for the show-and-tell matchup, which I wasn't really a fan of. So even though this sideboard already has some stuff for fair matchups, it's not uncommon for this deck to play Pyrokinesis, Fury, Fiery Confluence, things of that nature that give you a little bit of extra oomph versus creature decks. I don't really expect to use the one damage to each creature mode twice and clear out all of my token producers, but I think it'll be somewhat common that I'll do something like destroy two artifacts and do one damage to each creature, or just use this to nuke three artifacts. I have felt like artifact decks have had a relatively respectable online presence, uh, really probably in about the past two years or however long it's been since Urza Saga has been printed. So I usually want something in my sideboard, some sort of artifact destruction, Null Rod, um, Teferi's Realm, Hercules Recall, some sort of bullet against those decks. And I think Fiery Confluence is going to just be much more usable than the strong but very narrow Angel of Despair that was originally submitted in this deck list. Otherwise, like, the, the plan is very clear. This deck has kind of been off, off the 8 Rabble plan for quite some time. It used to be that this deck would really max out on trying to go turn 1 lock piece of some kind into turn 2 aggressive threat. And it may make sense to return back to this if broadside throwing the tokens just gets so much stuff out of the way. We'll kind of see how this feels. The deck doesn't have all that many actual factual red pips in it, not counting Shatter Skull smashing. Like, it has eight true red pips. If you start returning this direction, it's possible that you can slip some Cavernous Souls back into the mana base, but when you start looking at the sideboard cards, that starts to feel a little bit more dubious. So this is more me talking out loud here than anything else. Yeah, I don't think I have too much else to say here, so let's go ahead and jump into the league. If you find that you need any of these cards, please check out toamagic.com, that's Tales of Adventure, and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. I know that I personally will be ordering quite a few Outlaws of Thunder Junction cards from them, because there's a lot of sweet EDH cards, and maybe a few cards for Eternal formats as well. With that being said, let's battle. All right, my hand is definitely a Keeperino, and I'll probably play something broken on turn one. I may adjust this if it looks like we're playing 
against a days deck because I can play a critical card on turn two around days. Uh, sure. So if I jam now, I'm kind of forced at will checking my opponent. The, the awkward thing here is if I play City of Traders and something like a Magus of the Moon doesn't resolve, I like end up losing my City of Traders, which I would really not like to do versus the Wasteland deck. So I think I'm going to slow my roll, take a little bit of extra damage here, and just assume that I can eventually block a 2-2 in combat. We'll see if I get punished by, like, Troll Cycle Reanimate here. Ooh. That points to Death's Shadow. I'll take two. Sure. Chromox is not bad. I don't think Shatter Skull Smashing is going to realistically kill the Stalker anymore. So I think we Chromox this. I think I'm just going to keep this in respect of soft permissions still. All right. Choices. I'm playing Magus directly into onboard removal right now. One, two, three, four, five, potentially six. This, If I play this, I can double spell next turn. I think I'm just going to do this, though. Like, this just forces interaction out. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Like, I'm very happy to take Force of Will and Blue Card here. And then start working towards dealing with this. Give me time to find, like, a broadside that can fling something at it to kill it, for example. It's one more scale after this that I think becomes rough. Like, I don't think I mind the 4-4. Four, four. If it starts scaling to 5-5, five, five, then double blocking is less likely to happen. All right, this is absolutely the plan to kill this creature. I think I would like 6 mana next turn which means playing Fable over Magus of the Moon. I think I'm going to do this. I think I've got time. Feels like opponent, yeah, like opponent has Force of Will blue card. All right, there's that daze I played around from the early game. So what, now I'm taking four damage, going to 11, playing a Magus, taking four or five damage, and then broadside fling Magus here, or maybe fling Spirit Guide there, depending on how things go. I think a Merktide Regent here is, like, unbeatable. The double force of will, this hand was rough. Yeah. All right, is there an out? I play Magus. I take 10. I am at 1. I play Broadside. I attack with it. I throw Magus. I kill this. This kills me in the air. Uh, yeah, I think we're just a little behind in terms of tempo here, unfortunately. So if I just jam on turn one, the daze potentially gets me, depending on when my opponent drew that, and I run into loss of land problems as well. So my opponent fetched Underground Sea twice. They may or may not have access to basics if they are on Death Shadow. They might have used a lot of slots for Underground Sea. Or not uh, Underground Sea, the Shockland. Watery Grave, there we go. So I think I like Hearse to help keep Merktide and potential reanimation stuff at bay. And I don't mind some amount of this stuff. Deal with Merktides and just six damage going to the face is perfectly respectable. How do I feel about Trinosphere? Is this a play draw thing? This may just like be a play draw thing where on the play I still jam the Trinospheres and on the draw I consider cutting them because like stalkers and griefs and stuff can just come down before Trinosphere and then it doesn't super make sense to commit resources to stopping those. On the draw I can also like play some dead gons to respect opposing creatures. Uh, I would have greatly preferred to do something on turn one here. The Pyroblast currently does not really make sense given that the plan is just jam 3-drop into 3-drop into 3-drop into 3-drop. I am very dead to Wasteland. There is not much to be done about that. Sure, sure. Alright, we are going to get scammed. My opponent has reanimated. It may behoove them to just take and reanimate my Ravel Master. Let's see, maybe that doesn't make sense with Double Fable here. Er, oh, cool, we're not getting scammed. That's awfully nice of my opponent. 
Like, the grief that just costs two cards to take one of my cards is not a grief that I am personally overly concerned with. Hydroblast would make sense here. Yeah. The real question is, like, do I take three next turn to play around a daze? It's kind of rough. Ugh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that I would hit as well. Now this triggers. Days be damned, I think. Yes. And we fable. I think if my opponent has a daze or a force here, they are so incredibly far ahead that I just have to risk that they don't. Sort of in an annoying spot where Bowmasters is quite good against me, as is like Swamp Cycle into Reanimate. Okay, cool. Ooh, no attack. They're going to scale up into a 3-3 three, three and attempt to wall my creatures. I think I loot both of these looking for mana sources. Okay. Uh, my last spell didn't get countered. How about this one? All right. So my opponent had the opportunity to troll cycle and did not end up getting a basic, and they didn't get a basic in game one. They might not even have them. Uh, that's obviously not a good draw. Am I even playing that? I think no for one turn. I also think I'm not attacking. Like, I just don't want to die to that creature, and I probably win. Like, this just results in my opponent passing the turn, and then I'll get, like, active reflection of Kiki-Jiki, and life is good. Now I think think I play this because now this represents three drop with red elemental blast back up in the future mountain so end of turn we'll go ahead and copy this creature it sticks around for my turn I can attack with it and get a treasure for probably no downside and at this point I'll hold extra lands for future copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker yeah, my opponent takes the uh, air quotes free block. I don't have a red removal as a follow-up. And now it's just a matter of time. We'll keep doing what we're doing. I think I do this post-combat when I have a little extra mana around. I don't think the raw amount of damage really matters. I guess this also just allows me to shatter skull smashing for X equals 1 if my opponent blocks. Which they do. Just do that for one damage to finish it off. And now the board is clear. I can deal four damage a turn while generating two more treasure tokens. I've got red elemental blast for something weird. Blood moon confirmed reasonable magic. The gathering TM card. Uh, I guess let's attack for six. And make three treasures. Uh, and this ends my opponent relatively quickly. There is a basic swamp in the deck. My opponent just like did not fetch it when they had the option to. They opted to ponder instead. Sure, I'm st still going to do this, despite the fact that I missed two points of damage if my opponent has a black removal spell here. In sort of a rarity, I can basically shatter Skull Smashing for infinite damage. It is a Bowmaster... Uh, that's fine. Like, I'm going to lose my Shaman token, and so I can't continue to copy it. I don't think that actually matters all that much. Like, I will top deck something reasonable before my opponent does the vast majority of the time. Goodbye, goblin friend. And I can also just, like, Shatter Skull smashing away a troll that gets into play because I just have so much mana. All right, opponent getting their hits in where they can. Yep. So we rabble. Got Reb to back this up if I need to. We copy Rabble Master. Now this really sweet thing happens where we make two tokens and then get to use them to crash in with the Rabble Master. Um, so I have like some alternative sideboard stuff I can think about now when I'm on the draw. My opponent will probably be a little more conservative about Blood Moon now that they have gotten mooned in a post sideboard game, but like they have shown me a desire to get like blue blue with double underground C two games in a row, so maybe I'm wrong. If I go down 
on lock pieces. I can just play more answers to creatures and just decrease the chances that I physically die. I don't know that Trinosphere makes sense anymore on the draw. Like, it is cert... Excuse me. It is certainly not a bad card. I haven't seen Entomb-style stuff, so I don't know that I want to go this deep. And even if my opponent was on Entombs in game one, they might not be anymore. Balance of answering Merktide Regent and Bowmasters and Stalker. I don't know how much to go in any one of these directions. These hit cantrips, these hit Force of Wills. Unsure if I just keep mooning. I'm gonna max out Dead Gons over Pyroblasts and keep Blood Moon. Not 100% sure. Boarding with these style decks is so dependent on what your actual 75 is. That even I, with as much experience as I have with the archetype, am still frequently... Yeah, okay. So there is there is the shadow stuff in this deck. Uh, yes, that resolves. I think I shove a Blood Moon now. The question is, like, which one? Actual Factual Blood Moon or Magus? Magus can get dismembered. Blood Moon can get Force of Negationed. I think I just want to stop my opponent from putting a Death Shadow into play because I can't answer that. I think it's Magus this turn. I think it's Magus this turn to play around Force of Negation. I am fine getting dazed here for a chance at basically winning the game on the spot. Yep, that is acceptable. I'm effectively taking 5 damage a turn cycle, so like... I am going to have to get the show on the road somewhat quickly. The only real problem is that if my opponent just drops death... That is interesting brainstorm timing. Does that mean there's a troll in hand already? They already made land drop. My opponent's also just at 7. This always is played. I think I just throw another haymaker here. And then intend on killing my opponent with Goblin Rabble Master in like two turns after they expend counter spells fighting over these moons. Yes. I accept this. Again, the Street Wraith is not a big deal. Like, the, the damage is relevant, but this game is not about that anymore. So. I think it's Rabble Master and. If I Rabble Master and tap Shatter Skull Smashing, I can then, in the not too distant future, Shatter Skull Smashing this as an actual removal spell to more permanently take it out of play. I can alternatively Goblin Rabble Master and Hearse. This line plays around third days with the card that matters. Oh, maybe I, I need to respect just permanently removing this creature. Like I take five in this turn cycle. I'm at five. I take two more. I'm at three. Yeah, I think I need to prioritize more permanently removing this creature. Yep. Let's play this as a land and pass. And then we just have to hope that my opponent does not have yet another piece of counter magic. You know, if they days, days force my first three plays and then take out the fourth play as well, like they've, they've got it. Uh, there's not too much to be done there. War boss is not what I am looking for. So I am at three. I am dead to a Bowmasters or a Daze or Force of Will blue card. If my opponent doesn't have anything right now, there is a very good chance that I have won this game. Fantastic. No Surveil Land is also really nice. My opponent is at four at the end of the day here. Well, oh, that's weird. Oh, this is so uncomfortable. My opponent didn't have Bowmasters last turn. They might have drawn it this turn. I guess I'm dead to it anyway. Um, well, I could War Boss. All right, how do I not lose to Bowmasters? I play Legion War Boss. I'm, I'm not dead to it, and I can just attack for lethal next turn. Reanimate is not a concern anymore if I hit my opponent for one damage. Yeah, I think I do this rather than go for lethal this turn. If I go for lethal this turn, I have to tap Ancient Tomb to play Hearse and throw it at my opponent. Or play the second creature. And then I die to Bowmaster Ping, which I do not want to do. We'll just send in for that one. Opponent's at three. Oh, this is down to the wire. Uh, that's not what my opponent wants to see in all likelihood. 
don't know, I guess that could be fourth land for grief. Okay, that's very good for them. So now I broadside and send on in. Sure. I believe we beat Bowmaster now. Oh uh, yeah, we have gotten the, the GG's. Uh, that was very close. Oof. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. All right, I will be keeping this hand. If memory serves, my opponent has been playing like beans, like five color control stuff recently. So shoving a blood moon is probably good. And we'll probably Trinisphere on turn one to just make it more likely that the blood moon resolves. I'd love to draw another red threat here. Hey, it is another red threat. So we'll Chrome Mox, we'll put the War Boss under. All that happened very quickly. I still think I Trinisphere over Moon immediately. And this means that the Moon does resolve. My opponent can potentially fetch a basic, but one color is probably not going to be enough for my opponent to win this game if, like, the Blood Moon is just guaranteed to resolve. The Force of Will is now online. Do I want to take a turn to Chalice on one? Not really. I, I think I am just going to play a Rabble Master and see if my opponent has drawn Force of Will in their last two draws. They have. And they had... Were their last two draws Force of Will, or... Did they get greedy and let Trinisphere resolve, hoping to answer it with something like a Prismatic Ending? Um, play that as a land. I think I am just putting this on one still. I don't want cantrips towards actual factual white mana that represents answering this shit. Um, I am going to hold lands in respect of Fable at this point. And there's going to be a lot of draw go here. Now I've got a layer of protection on this Blood Moon stuff. I would love to see actual green mana to confirm that my opponent is on beans and not just guy control. If they're on just guy control, they're drawing to like more basics and it might inform my like desire to continue to play Blood Moons and Maguses in post board games. But my opponent just concedes. Which is reasonable. If we are playing against Beans or Jeskai Control, I'm only kind of mid on Chalice. I'm probably going to board that out. Like play some unlicensed hearses in respect of Mystic Sanctuary, Merktide Regent, that sort of stuff. And maybe a couple of cards that randomly answer Uro and Cantrips, Planeswalkers. I think. I think I'm going to keep Blood Moon for this game and adjust a little bit depending on what I see. Something that I say a lot is lock pieces with no follow-up threat is often not a particularly keepable hand, so we're going to mulligan this one. This one is perfectly fine. Not seeing a confirmation of green mana or beans last game. It's a little rough in deciding what to do here. I think I am just going to get rid of the Pyroblast and stay as threat dense as possible. Oh, okay. Uh, so that vastly changes my evaluation of what cards I should have. So, like, for example, I don't have... Man, I could have Pyroblasted this. I, I want more Pyroblasts now. Let's see, which way does this go? Is this a timestamp thing or a layers thing? All right, yeah, so this is a timestamp thing. Um, so ha just confirming how this works. 
Both of these happen in layer four, so it's timestamp order. So it matters which one came latest. So if Blood Moon is the latest, the lands become mountains. Oh, but the basic lands continue to have all basic land types. Yeah, so that means that my Blood Moon doesn't actually do what I want it to do. It turns them into mountains, but they still have all the basic land types, so they still get to tap for those mana colors. Okay. So that means that I need to approach this game from the aggro axis, and I need to board out my Magus effects. Uh, sure, sure, sure. All right. I guess alternatively, I can go harder on the moon effects by attempting to pyroblast these more aggressively. Regardless, I'm going to be rethinking my sideboard strategy from scratch for sure. That's fine. Ooh, is there no land drop? Oh, no, there is. Okay. Current turns awkward. Like, broadside with nothing to throw is not the greatest. I think I'm just going to try to resolve a hearse this turn. And we'll just immediately start eating things from the graveyard. I, in fact, think that this is worth it. Like, let's just not ever have to deal with a Merktide Regent. And I don't mind throwing a hearse with a broadside for four damage. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like, I am so good with throwing a hearse to kill their broadside. So I will broadside. Hope that they don't have a one-mana answer to my broadside. Blue Elemental Blast. You got it. Let's hearse. Keep that graveyard clear. And I'll just try again next turn. The two damage without any additional support isn't scary. It's when something like Solitude starts coming down and my opponent can throw that that... It matters much, much, much more. So I will broadside. No. All right. That's annoying. So we're chilling. Okay. I don't have a lot of spot removal right now. Like, it's very possible that these just end up going the distance against me. I'm going to leave this in the graveyard for now, I think. Fable here, looting away these two. Two cards seems very important. All right. So now go ahead and crew. Looking for four. It could be five if I don't remove that, but I'm not sure that I want to overly scale up one of these and leave the other without any gas. I don't know. Maybe I'm just wrong. Like, if I invest too much in this one and then Swords to Plowshares on this happens, it's just weird for me. Good god. Yeah. I assume this kills me. I haven't mapped it out yet, but I take six, go to eight, and then my opponent just, like, murders me with broadsides. Right? Just throw, throw. Ten damage to face. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, we got got by the ley line of the guild pack to this game. Blood Moon's out for sure. Magus of the Moon's probably out. Red Elemental Blasts come in. Some number of Dead Gons potentially come in versus uh, Broadside in particular. And then I can use Fiery Confluence to just go to my opponent's face and kill them when they think they're stable. It can also kill multiple Broadsides if we get into that. Or some portion of the time, the... Destroying Artifact Mode can be relevant versus Scion of Draco if it doesn't have, uh, what is it, Hexproof or Shroud, whichever it is. No. This is also a no, but slightly quieter. Like, I'm actively unhappy about this hand, but I don't know that it makes sense to mulligan further either. Probably just get rid of Ancient Tomb and keep gas. I am fully reliant on the top of my deck to provide me with gas rather than mana. And it's like 50-50, which of those things actually ends up happening. The Den of the Bugbear helps a little bit in terms of giving me bonus stuff to do. But like, I'm very soft to just Swords to Plowshares being in my opponent's opening hand here. So please don't have it. All right. Guess I play this. All right, well, we've made it to our attack step without my Goblin Rabble Master getting blown up. I am... Um, incredibly happy about that. My opponent's at 12. 
I can start attacking with Den of the Bugbear next turn. Yeah, what are all the words on this? So, first strike, hexproof, lifelink, trample, vigilance. So my dead gone doesn't do anything against it, and my creatures are forced to attack into it. <laughs> nice. So, start with Pyroblast on the ley line. Now, do I attempt to dead this and leave myself with three tokens on board? Or do I just gone it and hit my opponent for a bunch? I think I do the tempo play and hit them for a bunch. Like, this probably doesn't get back into play without this. Like, I am just trying to end the game next turn, if at all possible. My opponent's at four. So they'll need, like, double spot removal to get through the turn or something like that. My opponent has gone waiting to pay costs a couple of different times and ultimately not done it. Um, they are currently dead on board. So they will need to show me an additional piece of interaction here. I guess they could have a lightning bolt or something. No, we just win. GG's. Today's video is sponsored by topdeck.gg. They're an awesome company that runs an awesome tournament series. If you would like to play for prizes such as Time Twister, check out the Top Deck Championship Series. It's run using their patented Command Tower software, which is awesome for EDH events, although you can use it for anything. Your players can scan QR codes and then get real-time standings and seamless pairings for their event. If you're looking to step up your local tournament game, check them out. All right, my hand's a keep, and it's just a question of how do I want to play it. I Like, I can just shove Blood Moon and hope that it wins me the game on the spot. Or I can Chromox imprint Blood Moon, shove, fa shove Fable, and try to loot these lands into something more relevant. I think I'm just going to shove Blood Moon with this hand. Like, I don't have a follow-up threat if the Blood Moon resolves, which I'm, like, not the biggest fan of. I think just turn one on the play, blind matchup, I'm okay doing this. And it does work. We'll see if it wins me the game. Fuck. Blood Moon and Chalice are just very bad here. And my opponent is going to end up having access to colored mana. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, I am a luck sack though, so I do have that going for me. I get to Chalice on zero for this matchup. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but that's almost certainly good. And I top decked a threat. So this has gone about as optimally as it can for me once we saw this Mox Opal. Metalcraft is not quite on yet. I'm probably going to appreciate the fiery confluence that is in my deck. Okay, so we know what my opponent is playing now. They are playing the like one. Ooh. Well, we had an idea of what my opponent was playing. I am fine trading Rabble Master for Lodestone Golem if that's a thing that my opponent wants to do. My opponent might not even have colored mana in their whole deck. Like, they may be a colorless deck. This still leaves me with a threat in play. I think this is fine. If my opponent is on a blue version that has clones taking the meaningful creatures out of play is, like, super relevant as well. Yeah, that's that's probably the final push that my opponent is just a colorless artifact deck. Okay. Always lucky. Never didn't have it. So we will attack for three this turn. Opponent's at 14. Patchwork Automaton a lot worse with Atronosphere in play. Um, yep. So this combos with Grim Monolith. This can allow the Patchwork Automaton to attack and block. Uh, yep. Rucible, sure, you could play Mountains from Graveyard. And after my next draw, I'll decide whether or not I want to offer a trade of Rabble Master for Patchwork. I just hit my opponent for four still. I can hit them for three kind of continuously. I kind of want to take this off the board and not let my opponent randomly like find a Shadow Spear, give it lifelink, and then have a way to like actually win the game from there. So I think I am fine with this. Like, the block is obligatory. Six damage is just too much to let go right now. Like, I have a three-turn clock as is. Oh, we're going big. Oh, we're not going big. Uh, all right, I 
stacked my magic online deck this round. It's very clear. Uh, yeah, attack for five. You're dead next turn. Um, they can draw a copy of the one ring. Get protection from everything and buy a little time. I think we got lucky that game. I'm very into Fiery Confluence. I do... I probably don't want Blood Moon to fight... And, like, despite the fact that, like, it does turn soul lands into regular lands, I think that's often going to be slow. The only thing to, like, really consider is Urza's Saga. Like, that card is a pain in the butt. My chalices go on zero or sometimes one. I can avoid keys. Is Urza's Saga enough of a problem card for my build that I have to just keep in my moons? Moons so bad. Earth is mid, dead gone is mid. Blood Moon does not have power and toughness. Dead gone deals with an Urza Saga token. It sometimes deals with a patchwork. Only sometimes. Paying the ward cost is actually really tough for my deck. Um, sorry, assuming the gone side. It scales out of dead very quickly. I think I'm going to play six moon effects instead of eight. Uh, I could go down Trinispheres. Maybe Trinisphere on the draw doesn't make sense. It's still okay versus some of the combo -y stuff, but my opponent might just like dump their hand before I Trinisphere. Yeah, I'm going to buy that on the draw. I maybe don't Trinisphere. I don't know. Like, Trinisphere and Blood Moon both have severe weaknesses. I don't like this. Just does not have enough persistent mana. I do like this. I think I'm going to put a Magus of the Moon back in the deck. And keep the additional land in case things get weird. Yep. I guess I can dead the Patchwork Automaton right now for 3 mana. Which it looks like that's what I'm doing with my turn. After I remove this... What are the chances that my opponent just plays Urza Saga for their next turn? And I just need this Blood Moon. Like 50-50 maybe? I think I'm going to imprint a Legion War Boss. And just kill Patchwork, keep the board clear. I can use Blood Moon to stabilize my mana base and then play Dun of the Bugbear. I maybe don't want to Blood Moon immediately though, because this is reducing the amount of damage that I need to do to my opponent before my opponent dies. And, like, that is quite relevant. Wasteland. Yeah, that's very good. This sort of thing is why I kept the additional land. Although I was more imagining that, like, Chrome Mox could get answered or shut off than anything else. Oh, that's some spice. Sure. Okay. But now I'm stuck. I think I'm totally fine as long as I draw a land in the next two turns. But my opponent has a really big window to resolve something like the One Ring or... Uh, oh, wow. Um, what do you do again? Protection from Multicolored First Strike. Destroy turret non-land permanent. Fuck, okay. So I just, like, lose Chrome Mox. I think I'm dead if I miss my land. Soul Land's not really good. Yeah, I think I just lost to that. Uh, okay. That's fine. These are very good. Even better than I thought. Uh, actually, no, that doesn't actually enter it. Answer the Mastercore protection from monocolored. Or was that monocolored or multicolored? Protection from multicolored. Furnosphere seems good. I really don't want to, like, board these out and then just get absolutely punked by Blood Moon. Or, uh, sorry, Urza Saga. These also help versus Wasteland. Maybe Trinosphere is not actually good. Ugh. Uh, I don't know. Maybe six moon effects. Got foundry inspectors to think about as well. As things that dead gone can kill. Uh, yeah. I'll keep this. And this is just aggro dot hand. Just rabble master into broadside. Ignore the blood moon like it doesn't exist. Unless my opponent plays Urza Saga. In which case it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. My opponent is on... Five cards here, and is going to be facing down an incredibly aggressive hand. That's not to say that, like, they have no agency in this game and this is just over or anything, but there's very specific things that are good at this point. Uh, yep. 
Ooh, patchwork go is not what my opponent wants to be doing here. All right, um, I can fire confluence for one and clear the board. I don't think I'd do that. I think I just go bam, broadside, and intend on flinging a token at this to kill it next turn. This is just so much raw damage right now. Like, my opponent is at eight. I could throw Rabble Master at their face and leave them at three. Yeah, we have gotten the, the, the GGs from my opponent. Um, that was an absurd start. So if I keep this hand, it's just like turn to Chalice of the Void. Maybe a threat later. I think we can fish for better. Um, Mountain, Romox, Imprint, something. Spirit Guide, play something. This is gonna be fine. I think I am going to throw back the war boss and leave myself the flexibility of playing either one of these cards depending on what I see on the other side of the table. My opponent ponders. Ponder doesn't shuffle. And now I'm just kind of left with the question, how do I proceed? Uh, it seems like my opponent is f6, so I am going to jam a blood moon. Putting Rabble Master under. No, they're not F6 anymore. My first spell just uh, resolved incredibly quickly, so it felt like they were. Blood Moon confirmed. Good. So now we ha decide how to sideboard versus underground C. There's a lot of variation in what my opponent could be. It's probably correct to assume that they are on some grief bullshit. So we should probably just like preemptively board. Some amount of this stuff. One of the issues is that, like, I don't know exactly how aggressive my opponent's deck is. Let's maybe not try to free roll ones with Chalice. I think I just want some amount of extra removal here. Like, play some extra answers to Merktides and Griefs and stuff when I'm on the draw. The, the lock pieces just don't go quite as far on the draw. I think I'm going to keep the moons. Keeping my opponent off of blue blue matters a lot. I don't know if they're Riscaminator. If they are Riscaminator, I don't know whether or not they are going to keep in the Entomb Reanimate package versus me. Um, I think this is like a mediocre hand that I'm fine keeping when I don't have more information about what my opponent is doing. Like, they lost to a Blood Moon last game, and I just have two of them in this hand that I can play on turns two and turn three. I have a thing that can theoretically answer a turn one Stalactite Stalker. This is pointing more towards Beans. Against Beans, I would like my Trinospheres, that I currently do not have access to. But, like... Boy, howdy, do I have good cards to play. Just like Moon into Moon into Rabble Master into War Boss. Um, order can change a little bit. But I think I am always shoving Blood Moon on my next turn. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we are just attempting to treat Blood Moon as I win the game dot spell. And so conceptually, I like Trinospheres to help make sure that Blood Moon does not get Force of Willed while cantripping with up the Beanstalk. Sure. A Wasteland would be kind of annoying. That's something that I don't really want to see right now. Oh, hey. Look, it's a Wasteland. Yeah. Uh, that's actually a very good draw. I'm, like, very happy with that Ancient Tomb. Uh, we're, we're just shoving again. Like, show me another Force of Will. All right, they showed me another Force of Will. We got a Merktide Regent for our trouble. I have six more Blood Moon effects remaining in my deck. My opponent has no basic lands yet. Oh, they have a Merktide Regent that I am about to bounce to their hand, though. Um, and replaying the Merktide Regent as just like a 3-3 flyer is whatever. It's three mana to bounce. Next turn I can double Goblin. Gone. Get out. Third Force of Will, okay. Uh, that's very bad. We are in the statistically unlikely number of Force of Will realms, I believe. Uh, sure. The good news is that, like, there's only one Force of Will left. The bad news is that, like, Merktide Regent is a jerk. And it's hard to answer. What is the number here? Six or more. 
Sure. Can I kill my opponent from 16 next turn? I deal two this turn, they're at 14. I, I think I if they don't have removal, that I am at least threatening making them hold back Murktide Regent. Uh, so let's do this. I think at this point I don't get to play... Oh, fuck. Uh, I, I can't tap this Ancient Tomb. Or I die immediately. Er? Seems like if you have Brainstorm, you do that while this is on the stack, not after it has resolved. I guess there's an argument that you, like, wait for the priority pass to see if I'm going to cast another thing, but if I cast another thing, I just, like, die. I guess I can... No, I can't draw another Shatter Skull Smashing. That's just not going to work. Er... Now my opponent just gets to try to cantrip for removal or safety. And my Ancient Tomb is shut off. I'm dead next turn. One, two, three. This is not 14 in any way that keeps me alive. So now that I know that I want Trinosphere to help shove Blood Moons through, and I can consider more Red Elemental Blasts for Murktide Regent in particular over Dead Gone, like, I can make that swap. Trinospheres can come in. I could board a little mana out. I could board a couple of threats out. I could not play Dead Gons. Probably not play Dead Gons on the play. Like, trim two Legion War bosses or something. I think I like this. Uh, Den, Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Trinosphere. No guaranteed follow-up. I don't think I like it. I think this is worse than the average soul land containing hand. I say as I draw a soul land hand that does not have red mana. This is fine, but slow. I'll keep this. I'll get rid of a city. I think I get rid of Den of the Bugbear so I don't get wastelanded in the first turn cycle. Um, but this this is a, a pretty weak mulligan in my estimation. I'm going to be bad against Force of Will, Days, Wasteland. Um, that helps a little bit, um, but this is definitely no thoughts, just shove and hope the opponent dies. Eh, I'm getting hydroblasted. I'm getting dazed. Sure. A follow-up wasteland is devastating. Good, that didn't happen. So the worst timeline has been avoided, and at this point I don't care about wasteland anymore. All right, I'm in play. My opponent thought about it for a while, which may mean that they actually have a removal spell that they can use later and a counter spell that they could have used right there. For sure, sure. That's no shuffle. We could be looking at, like, murderous cut or fatal push. Hey, I like this stuff. Um, Sequencing. I kind of think my opponent has a counter spell. I think I try to get Legion War Boss Force of Willed and then resolve Broadside. All right. Stifle, sure. My opponent is Stifle Knot at the end of the day. All right, good stuff. Okay. I'm getting to attack with my creatures in a way that I maybe didn't actually think was going to happen. My opponent is at eight. I'm going to just broadside and throw a token rather than just going for maximum damage by throwing a rabble master. My opponent's at six. Sweepers like Toxic Deluge aren't particularly popular right now. So we're more worried about like double removal spell. No, that's fine. That does not impact this turn cycle all that much. My opponent's just dead if they tap out for Murktide. I just attack and throw Rabble Master at their face. So this needs to be something like a murderous cut instead. And I think my opponent finished doing their math for Murktide Regent and realized that they were dead. Are we 4-0 now? We are 4-0 now, playing for a trophy. All right, hands a keep. Let's see what we're paired against. Basic Swamp. All right, how scared am I right now? Am I going to die right now, or do I get to play magic? Ooh. I don't think this literally kills me right now. But I don't really have removal for that. Can I out damage this reasonably? I think since I'm playing for a trophy, I am going to try. I believe that out damaging this looks like this, where I try 
not to tap Ancient Tomb. My opponent is at 14, so I do have a head start damage-wise. If I draw another untapped land, I can just try to play this... Oh, fuck. God. Ugh. I can just try to play this game in a way where I don't tap the Ancient Tomb. I think the follow-up grief there is too much, and I'm just going to be dead. Uh, okay. That's real good. So I'm always doing this. And then the question is, like, how much do I risk it? I think I'm going to risk it here and do this. Make a goblin. Attack with everything. Mentor this. Grief gets shot. This puts my opponent to eight, and they are dead to my board next turn. Hot damn. Okay, so we are playing against what is presumably a mono-black aggro deck, a mono-black scam deck. My Trinospheres are not great. Uh, my Blood Moon effects are probably worse. So actual factual Blood Moon is the first thing that comes out. Chalice on one is reasonable, less so on the draw. I basically want all of my removal, probably including Fiery Confluence since Reanimate is such a thing. And Fairy is something that I should probably think about. It's very good versus Troll. It's not great versus Grief. I think Trinisphere is very slow on the draw. I am replacing red cards with red cards. Colorless card, colorless card. Okay, so I'm still doing okay in terms of red count for things like Chrome Mox. And now kind of the question is like Chalice of the Void versus Magus of the Moon as my last three board outs. Magus of the Moon is red. Chalice of the Void is bad on the draw. That's kind of the considerations. Like, Magus of the Moon is not a good card here against my opponents. I don't know, dozen swamps or something. I think I'd be more embarrassed to cast a Magus. So let's do that. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's very awkward. I think I'm going to keep it. Like, I'm good against Dark Ritual, Reanimate, Troll. And any red card represents very good things with Chrome Mox. I think I am going to start here rather than shoving Fable, which is very good. And I think I'm going to go ahead and imprint a Spirit Guide right now so that if my opponent has discard, I'm not taken off of red mana. Hey... We have reanimate covered. Ooh, my opponent has white in their deck. Um, that means my opponent can theoretically answer this stuff. Hello. Get out, troll. And this returns my fairy to play. Baller. So always attack for two. Opponent's at 18. I think I will find things to do with this mana off Fable. I think I'm okay playing one. Like, playing one potentially lets me double spell next turn. Serenity. Um, that's good. Makes playing the second fable very awkward. So I'm always discarding this ancient tomb. I guess at this point I have cards that I'm looking for that are much better than fable. Alright, I'm gonna play this. I'll take two to play a war boss. Yaw. Send it. Got a little extra mana for later. I just have so much power on board right now that, like, even if my opponent clears out some of this stuff, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, I, I lose a very relevant amount of stuff here. Ooh. Atraxa. Well, that's very good. Sure. Uh, yeah. My opponent might be able to beat me with that. Is that the Surveil Land? Yeah. Unmarked Graved as well. Okay, this is this is a brew. So there's another Entomb. And then my opponent is going to Exhume. Put an Archon into play. I'll sack a creature. Discard a card. I have Dead Gons in. Shatter Skull Smashing not doing it. Get attacked for lethal. Well, basically lethal in the air. Play this as a tapped land. 
effectively at 8. I can jump block. My opponent's at 22. I don't think I come back from both of these creatures. So my opponent is a full-on combo deck. They do have a secondary color. I don't think Magus is particularly good anyway. Fire Confluence is less good than I thought it was since my opponent is truly a reanimator deck. Magus of the Moon can come out fully. I'm not expecting Wastelands anymore. That means some number of these come in. And I probably just like Junk 1 Legion War Boss to be better at stopping my opponent from comboing off. This is probably fine with a fairy in hand to get through the first turn cycle. I don't think this hand is ideal, but I, th I think I keep this, and I think I don't get like excited about playing for a trophy and try to mulligan towards something stronger. I'm thinking about what land. I think I keep the Shatter Skull Smashing in hand, and I think I need to keep my City of Traders. Like, I don't think I Chalice on one immediately. Okay. I think I am most interested in Trinisphere currently. It's a little tough. Sure. I just want to defend this fairy that is currently in my hand. Sure, that's good. That's not a troll cycle, uh, which matters a lot. That's uh, a troll. Sure. With fairy here, I think I just play threat into threat and try to end this game, rather than going for more lock pieces. We'll just send in for one. We'll ferry away the troll if my opponent tries to reanimate it. Play another Goblin Rabble Master. And try to just make my opponent dead. Uh, Serenity can get rid of Trinisphere. I think that's okay. Like, that does cost my opponent a Lotus Petal. Which is kind of a big deal. We'll Rabble. Make two tokens. Attack my opponent for near infinite damage. Opponent's at 10, so reanimate style cards are still live. Trinisphere goes away. Grief is annoying. So I will ferry, get rid of Troll, and I guess Serenity. My opponent needs Entomb plus reanimate. They can get an Atraxa. Is that enough? Sure. Okay. That is Atraxa. Oh, it's Animate Dead, not Reanimate. That leaves my opponent with more life. They have a Reanimate, so they can Entomb. They've got Lotus Petal, so they can Entomb. Or like an Archon, Reanimate it, get rid of a Goblin token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did my... My opponent did not choose to take a Reanimate that they legally could have taken. Huh. I mean, the interface for Atraxa is not great on Magic Online. So they've got Scrubland, Lotus Petal, Entomb. Oh, I have to math, don't I? So if my opponent blocks a Goblin Rabble Master, Atraxa dies. They block a gajillion D damage. I will have, what, five Goblins. The Rabble Master is plus six. So six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11 damage of my opponent's 16. 1, 2, shock. 3, 4. That feels lethal. Okay. Imprint. 2. Play this. Shock. And that is lethal damage for the trophy. Well, Brian, your deck feels good, obviously. Like, we, we got the trophy. I will say, like, this this was a hard-fought trophy. This was not just, like, a, a sweep where we 2-0'd every round. I believe we 2 one every round that we played. The, the deck feels good. Like, it feels streamlined. It feels refined. Not needing the fourth mana a good portion of the time is very relevant. Um, not having Caves of Chaos Adventure as something that's just, like, very powerful for our opponents to reanimate is good. Not having Caves of Chaos Adventure as something that, like, your Beans opponent just, like, oh, kill Caves of Chaos Adventure, flash in Bowmasters, take the initiative, I win the game. Like, not having that as a liability seems reasonable. Like, I, I like what's going on here. I, I would need a lot more matches with this build to, like, see a better matchup spread to see how I feel about it in the metagame as a whole. 
but I liked the cards that I had access to today, and I, I give this a thumbs up. I feel pretty good about the numbers that that I adjusted. Like this, this is clearly a strong legacy deck right now, and I believe some of the recent data that was published. Um, one of the grinders did a Reddit post that was kind of looking at the win percentage of decks and the Moon Stompy deck on paper was doing better against the blue black scam deck than the goblins deck was which is a little confusing to me because i feel like it should be the other way but that's what the data shows so maybe this is a, a very strong choice moving forward and for those of you trying to play competitively in an ancient tomb shell like this one has my approval consider trying it out and if you know bleh, and if you need any cards to try it out, check out toamagic.com, that's Tales of Adventures, and use promo code THRABENU to let them know that I sent you and continue supporting my content. Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!